Hi everybody, I'm Tim from TroutandFeather.com and thanks for viewing this YouTube fly tying tutorial on the EC Caddis, otherwise known as the Emerger Crippled Caddis. This is a fly that was developed by Mr. Ralph Cutter in the 1980s and it was intended to match the caddis hatch in a sense if we're talking about the stage that comes right before they turn into adults and that's the emerger phase. Now both mayflies and caddis flies go through this emerger stage and whenever we're fishing tailwaters we have to really be cognizant of it because tailwater fisheries all across the United States tend to run with very cold temperatures. I'm talking high 30s, low 40s. Whenever we have these extreme cold temperatures throughout most of the year, a lot of the insects will have an emergence that's a lot slower. It'll take them a lot longer to get into that adult stage. Thus, sometimes they'll be stuck in a sense in this emerger stage and fish will key in on that. Hence the creation of this pattern. So it's meant to imitate that emerger stage or a crippled caddis fly prior to it becoming an adult if it becomes one. Now whenever I go through my typical caddis progressions, and I'm talking about dry fly situations where I have fish rising and I believe they're eating the duns, or, or the, I'm sorry, the, the caddis fly adults. I'm going to start with something like an elk hair caddis, deer hair caddis, maybe an X caddis. Um, then I could possibly get into a CDC caddis, but if those patterns aren't working and I'm seeing a few possibly, we'll say a little bit splashy rises then I'm more than likely going to drop down to this pattern before going underneath the chase after these fish. This is a great pattern because it's one of those that rides really low in the water, yet there's some other unique characteristics that I want to point out prior to tying. For starters, similar to the X Caddis, we're going to be using Antron or Zelon as a tailing fiber. And that's going to basically represent that trailing shuck of the Caddis fly prior, prior to it becoming an adult. Next, Mr. Cutter decided that he wanted to go with a two-tone body and he wanted the back end, the abdomen, to be darker than the thorax. Now, it really took a while for me to wrap my brain around that and then I started reading a lot about caddises and as they emerged, they basically crawl forward from their shuck. But prior to them making that crawl, right when they start to make that crawl, the back end, their abdomen, is a lot darker. Hence, in this pattern that I tie for you today, you're going to notice that I have a much darker body than the thorax, and I am going to go for that two-tone look that Mr. Cutter had recommended. And then finally, one of my favorite parts of this fly is putting a parachute hackle underneath the deer hair. Now to me, that's a really smart idea because you can represent the legs, but I'm going to make sure that I take it one step further and I'm going to recommend that you use some type of a barred hackle no matter what the color you're using for that hackle. You can go with grizzly, a barred ginger, a barred dun, it doesn't matter, but I really believe that that barring will give it that insect life ability, if that makes any sense at all, but I really just believe that that barring will give it almost that proof of life that the fish need to see because that barring is really important to them and I've read a lot about that barring over the years. So that's a little bit of a background on this EC Caddis. It's a great fly to have in your box. I recommend having it in a variety of sizes in those colors that really will most match the Caddis in your local waters that you fish on a regular basis. So with that said, I'm going to show you a picture of this finished fly and then go into the tying procedures after listing all the materials. Let's start tying this EC caddis. In my Stonfo Cayman vise, I have a hook from Allen Fly Fishing. This is their D102BL. It's a dry fly hook. The BL stands for barbless. I'm tying this in a size 16, though I will tie this pattern the whole way down to 20 and as large as a size 12 for the caddis in my area. I'm going to be using some Uni ADOT tan thread. I am going to be turning these lights on and off throughout the tutorial because I noticed that they are extremely powerful and they tend to wash away some of the color. So just to give you an idea. That's the tan I'm using. So let's get this started. The first thing we're going to do is tie in the trailing shuck after we have our thread locked in place. I prefer to use a camel to a brown Zelon or Antron material. I really love that look. I think it just gives a lot of um, great coloration. Depending on how dark you're going to tie this caddis, that's how dark you should make the antron as well. So in this case, I'm going to be tying a little bit of a lighter one. The amount of fibers you grab it really varies, but we're talking anywhere between, I don't know, 8 and 15, somewhere around there if that makes sense. 
I'm going to trim. I'm leaving them extra long so you can see everything. Lock them in place. Then I'm just going to pull them so I have their tips relatively lined up. Get those locked down. And then go back. I want to stop my thread wraps approximately right where the barb would be. Now it's up to you when you decide to, to trim these this trailing shuck. I'm going to do it right now since I just tied them in. I'm looking for a length basically not quite as long as the body. So think, imagine what the body size is and trim it down just a hair. And I like when they splay out a little bit. All right, next we're going to add in our dubbing. Now as I mentioned in the introduction, we want that the, the dubbing that's going to be going over the body, over the abdomen, to be a little bit darker than our front dubbing. And this is something you may have to experiment with. Now, my favorite dubbing to use on this pattern is a, a medium chocolate brown, if that makes sense. I'll show you what it looks like. This is just an awesome dubbing. Um, I can't recommend a place for you to purchase this because this is the excess um, hair that my our Labradoodle Izzy sheds. Um, Heather knows that I have this. She um, definitely supports the cause. So this is just an awesome brown and it's great to pair this with a light tan. And you can see the combination of the two. So whenever I'm going for that contrast, this would be the abdomen. This would be more of the thorax. Now being that I'm going to be tying this for all of you, I, and I'd like to recommend some colors. I can't recommend Izzy's, but if you have a nice chocolate brown. Or in this case, I'm going to be using uh, some, some dubbing from the Delaware River, River Club. I have two packages. One is dark brown. One is mahogany brown. Whenever you examine these from the back, this is the mahogany brown right now. You'll notice that there is a slight difference. One has a little bit more grains. One has a little bit more of the browns. This one, which is the dark brown, tends to have a lot of grain in it. Whereas this mahogany brown definitely seems to be a little bit more in that red brown phase. So I'm going to shoot with this one today. If I'm going after a little bit more of a green caddis, then without a doubt, even though it's not necessarily called a green caddis, I'm going to go with that dark brown for the abdomen. I'm going to grab a pinch of this. I want to dub a very tight body. While I'm dubbing this on, I will mention that for the most part on my dry flies, I really prefer natural materials and I tend to stay away from the synthetics. But on this pattern, knowing that it's going to be representing that emerger, I will sometimes use an Antron blended dubbing. So don't be afraid to try those synthetics for this abdomen section. All right, and that's all the further I'm going to go. In fact, I kind of feel like I should back it off just a hair. I want to make sure I have room for everything else in here. Next, I'm going to add in my grizzly hackle. Now, as I mentioned in the introduction, and I hope I was, I was clear in that, I really prefer any type of a barred hackle for this wing or for these legs. Now, um, it's up to you as to the color. If I had to make one general recommendation, it would be a light grizzly. I would go with that color without a doubt. But the one I'm going to be using for this is going to be from Collins Hackle. And I'll zoom out so you can take a little bit better peek at this. And this is what he calls a grizzly brown. Um, it's a borderline Cree, a lot darker than a Cree. Um, but this has some great coloration to it. Um, just an awesome looking hackle. And the one thing that I really like, and what I'll stress whenever you're tying this type of an emerger with this grizzly hackle, you want that barring to be as close together as possible, that black and whatever the, the, uh, the additional color is. You can see on this one, it's black, brown, black, brown, black, brown, and they're very close. So that's something that I'm going for whenever I'm tying in these legs and whenever I'm selecting hackle for that. Let me zoom back in here. So I have a piece that I've already selected. What I'm going to do is just remove the excess by the stem. and lock this in place. Next we're going to add our wing. In this case I'm going to be using some deer hair. Uh, I love using deer hair on these patterns. There's, there's positives and there's negatives. The positives is that this coastal deer hair typically will float a lot better than elk. The negative, it tends to be darker so it may be tougher to see on the water. Keep that in mind based on how good your eyes are. I trim away a small clump of this stuff.
I'm going to take a, a comb, comb out some of that excess. I'm going to take that, place it in my stacker. This is my uh, stacker from Stonfo. Then I have the tips facing the bend of the hook. I'm going to grab those with my left pointer finger and thumb. Just shake out all this excess. Now I want to line it up so that these tips are just extending to the bend of the hook. That's where I want them. Once they're there, I'm going to transfer all these fibers into my left hand. A pinch wrap, and I want to pull straight down. Get about seven or eight nice locking wraps in there. Now the one thing you'll notice, because we're, we're tying in such a small amount of fibers and they're so close to the tips, these butt ends aren't going to shoot straight up. So I want to kind of help to force them to do that. So I'm going to take them, pull them back, and then place the same amount of wraps in front of them. And you'll see, now they're shooting straight up and down. I'm going to grab a pair of scissors. This is a scissor, the pair I used to, to cut wire and deer hair. I'm just going to trim these right now. I leave a, a little remaining clump. Now we have a couple options as to where we're going to go, but in this case, I really prefer to just tie in my, my dubbing. For the front dubbing, I'm going to be using super fine dubbing, the color's tan. Now, even though this appears to be really a, a light tan, when it gets wet, it gets much darker. So I do want to stress that just because you see it in the packaging, that does not mean it's going to be that color when it hits the water. Before I tie this in, I'm actually going to bring my thread back. I want to examine the bottom, see exactly where I'm going to start, and I'm going to be placing my thread directly through that deer, that deer hair clump. I'm not going to need a lot of dubbing because my thread is tan as well. Just going to wrap forward. Once I have a few wraps, I'm going to try to take this front edge, pick those up a little bit, and wrap back again. If you lock a few of those under your thread, don't worry. And that's good. I don't need any more in there. So I'm going to get this excess off my thread. And now we're just about ready to finish off this fly. Now the last portion of this is one of the simplest ones. We're going to be wrapping this hackle, and we're going to be wrapping it parachute style. Now to do this, uh, my key is, without a doubt, less is more, because we're going for that cripple, that emerger look. Let's just kind of envision this fly with all these legs splayed out. Maybe all the legs haven't formed yet, so we don't want to put too many turns of hack wind. We want this to be sitting in the film. We want it to be riding really low. So I'm just going to make sure that all these deer hair fibers are up. So I'm just going to grab the wing, pull it up. Once I have it up, it looks like for the most part, there might be a few pieces trapped. I'm going to wrap under it. Wrap in front of it, around a second time, and that's it. So I've basically made one and a half rotations. Then at this point, I'm going to lift that front amount of fibers straight up towards the wing, and then lock this hack in place. So I have them now out of the way. Four wraps is all it's going to take. At this point, I'm going to take this excess hackle, bend it up, and trim it as close to the hook as possible. All right, now we're just about complete. I want to take a peek at the fly, make sure I have everything covered, which I do. Now at this point, I'm always cautious because as we get near the end, you don't want to lose a wrap and have everything just go all over the place. I'm going to put in one half hitch, then I'm going to whip finish. For my half hitch, I just want to move everything back. Don't be afraid to really get aggressive with those fibers because you, you don't want to get them trapped in at this critical moment in this endeavor. So I got my half hitch in place. And now for my whip finish, same thing. I'm just going to pull all those fibers, get them out of there. Lock my thread in place. I've caught one fiber in there. Maybe not. All right, and now we have a finished look at this EC caddis, the Emerger Cripple caddis. 
Uh, I'll give you the 360 view of it. I'll do it first with this light on, then as I mentioned earlier, I may turn it off just so it doesn't wash away too many of the colors. Now it's off. Hopefully that two-tone body is showing. It's a slight two-tone in, in this instance. Uh, there's all kinds of color combinations you can go for, and don't be afraid to experiment based on the colors that you know are in your area. Well, uh, with all that said, I really do appreciate you viewing uh, this EC Caddis for this fly tying tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them directly on this YouTube page, or you can email me at tkamisa at gmail.com. Thanks go out to Allen Fly Fishing for the use of their D102BL dry fly hook. You can find that hook and many others at allenflyfishing.com. If you like this YouTube fly tying tutorial, you can find more of mine at my website, which is troutandfeather.com. And I also have a Facebook, and you can like that and get the occasional updates that I post on there. Well, once again, everybody, I, I really greatly appreciate the view and all the, the positive feedback regarding uh, these YouTube fly tying tutorials. Thanks, good luck with this pattern, and I would definitely stock a few of these in your dry fly caddis box.